difference. We can make a difference. Go make a difference in the world. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to this morning's celebration of the liturgy. If anyone is visiting for the first time, we want to warmly welcome you. And we'd also like to refer you to our liturgical aid that you can follow along with the mass and the words to the songs. On the front of your liturgical aid is a, a motto, if you will, that Bishop Peter wrote some time ago. We like to repeat that together. So please look at your liturgical aid and we say, we are an emergent church practicing ancient faith in new ways. A church of inclusivity where all are welcome. So today we acknowledge both St. Peter and St. Paul together in honor of their martyrdom. These two apostles each had a full ministry in their time and never ceased in their endeavors for Christ. Peter is the rock on which Jesus will build his church. He was crucified after 25 years of laboring and building this church. St. Paul met God while he was struck blind in Damascus, and he left us 14 epistles that contain the basic truth of our faith. Please stand as we sing our gathering song, Sing With All the Saints in Glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
In your death, you bring us reconciliation. By your risen life, you bring us salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you call us to be instruments of healing for the sick and proclaimers of your gospel of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to that life which is everlasting. loving even unto death on us who give thanks this day for the heritage handed down unto us through these two holy apostles bestow your grace in abundant measure that we with them may fight the good fight finish the race keep the faith and receive at last the crown of eternal life we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. 
about that time, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brothers of John, killed by the sword, and when he saw that he was pleasing, uh, pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. He had taken him into custody and put him into prison under the ground of four squads of soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was uh, fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out into the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left it. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all the Jewish people uh, had it, and that the Jewish people had been expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of Paul to Timothy. For I am already being poured out like a libation and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, from now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. Thanks be to God. that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said on reply, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. You, and I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
everybody? Good morning, Deacon. I feel like it's been forever. And so you know the drill. I promise to keep this under two hours. <laughs> so before I get started into the homily, um, to, uh, well, actually, two days ago, for those of you that may or may not know, marks the beginning of the 41st year of our Blessed Mother's apparitions daily in Medjugorje. And every month, she leaves a message for the world. And so on the 25th of every month, she leaves a message. So yesterday, she left her most recent message, and I would just like to share it with you, because I think it's pertinent with what's going on in today's world. She says, Dear children, I rejoice with you and thank you for every sacrifice and prayer which you have offered for my intentions. Little children, do not forget that you are important in my plan of salvation of mankind. Return to God in prayer that the Holy Spirit may work in you and through you. Little children, I am with you also in these days when Satan is fighting for war and hatred. Division is strong, and evil is at work in man as never before. Thank you for having responded to my call. So, our gospel begins in Caesarea Philippi, which was an ancient port in northwest Israel, named in honor of the Roman Emperor Caesar, named so by Philip the Tetrarch, whose father was Herod the Great. Some of you might recall that it was Herod the Great who's had all, who slaughtered all the male children under the age of two or younger after the birth of Jesus. The Catholic Church considers these children the first Christian martyrs. But most of us would know Philip the Tetrarch because who he was married to. He was married to Salome the daughter of a Jewish princess named Herodias. And she persuaded her daughter Salome to belly dance for Herod Antipas and his guests at a dinner party one night. After which Herod Antipas, while in a licentious state of arousal, promised her anything she asked of him. And the rest of that story, my friends, is a homily for another day. But just a backdrop, as to what's going on in today's reading. And so our gospel reading begins with Jesus once again taking his show on the road and entering the region of Caesarea Philippi, the very same region he had healed a woman who had suffered for 12 straight years from uncontrolled bleeding or hemorrhaging, who in a combination of desperation and faith reached out to just touch Jesus' prayer shawl and was healed. So Jesus was no stranger to this part of the country. What I love about this particular gospel reading is that we get a glimpse into the types of conversation Jesus had with his disciples while they were out on the road, away from the crowds where they could let their hair down, so to speak, and talk freely among themselves. I find it interesting that Jesus would consult his truth about his standing in the court of public opinion, much like we do today when we consult the polls about a public persona to see what everyone else is thinking about that particular person. And so he speaks to them. He asks them, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And Jesus loved to refer to himself as the Son of Man because it speaks to him being fully human. And it is not until after his death on the cross and his glorious resurrection that he sends the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to permanently indwell and spiritually baptize his apostles. And it is then that Jesus fully completes his mission here on earth and therefore reveals his true identity as the Son of God, which speaks to his being fully divine. And that is why in baptism, we become children of God. And of course, as is typically the case when you go along with the crowd, they gave him all the wrong answers as to who he was. Now, Jesus didn't really care what the crowds believed about him. 
But what his disciples believed was crucial to him because he knew that the cross awaited him. And they would need unwavering faith for the coming events that would push their faith to the breaking point. Enter Peter. Gotta love Peter. Today we celebrate St. Peter and St. Paul. Before I go any further, some of you may know that I'm a, a paralegal by trade. And I work in a law office, so I'd like to share a little lawyer humor with you, so, so please bear with me. Uh, it seems that there were two young people. Uh, a young couple on the way to a chapel to be married. As fate would have it, they were killed by a drunk driver in a head-on collision. While they were at the pearly gates, the young bride-to-be asked St. Peter if it might poss be possible to still get married. St. Peter turned to St. Paul and whispered something in his ear just before St. Paul disappeared into the vastness of heaven. About six months later, St. Paul returns to the young couple and joyfully proclaims, well, kids, it took six months, but I was finally able to find a priest who would marry you. <laughs> his name is Bishop Peter. <laughs> and his ministry was in Southern California, not too far from where the two of you were to be married. The woman was overjoyed, but her young groom-to-be, in a moment of panic, blurts out, what if we can't do forever? What if we need a divorce? And before Bishop Peter could address the young, man, young man's concern, St. Paul, with a look of utter exasperation on his face, exclaims, oh, Oy vey, it took me six months to find a priest up here that would marry you. It might take me 600 years to find a divorce attorney in heaven. That's my joke for today. I apologize. Y'all know I fell on that joke. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus proclaims that Peter will be the rock upon which he builds his church. One of only three times the word church is used in the Gospels. And that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Which seems to indicate to me that at some point, Jesus' church is going to storm the gates of hell. And that hell's gates will be powerless to stop it. Now that hurts my head just thinking about the possibilities of what that can mean. In our second reading, St. Paul speaks of the reward that awaits all of the faithful who long for Jesus' return. Now he, of course, is not speaking only of himself, but all of us, the elect, those who have kept the faith and have faithfully proclaimed Jesus as their Lord and Savior, those whom Jesus has saved from their prison or their pending spiritual death as he did St. Peter in our first reading, and as he did St. Paul numerous times during his ministry. And so, what does all of this mean? Well, Jesus asks each of us, who do you say that I am? How will you answer? And know that this is not a rhetorical question. It is a question that begs an answer, and only the right answer will suffice, and only you can answer for yourself. Let me digress for just a moment. It reminds me of a, a Bible study I did in which we were discussing the story of the infamous sinful woman who crashed a dinner party that was being given to Jesus by one of, a, 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 one of the prominent Pharisees. And she comes in and she bathes his feet in her tears and dries them with her soft, dry hair. It's a very intimate and powerful story of repentance. I asked my Bible study group how they thought they would react when they met Jesus face to face. And when they had all answered, they turned the question on me. And they asked me, how did I think I would react? I told them that it would be my prayer that I react the same way as this sinful woman. Because whatever she did in her life, I've done 10 times worse. So if Jesus could forgive her, maybe he could forgive me. She gives me hope. Saint Peter gives me hope. Saint Paul gives me hope. 
because we worship the same Lord and Savior, the only begotten Son of the one true living God. And his name is above all other names, Jesus Christ. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel of our Lord. Shall we stand now as we profess our faith, the faith of the Catholic Church? We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God with the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made. One in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and died and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Peter said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Let us now present our petitions to the Lord who loves us and has given himself up for us. Our prayer response is, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world that wherever there is conflict and the threat of war, that, that world leaders will have the courage to seek peaceful means toward nonviolent resolution. We pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. prayer. For the unity of the people of God, for the Church of Jesus Christ, one Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For the growth and well-being of our sister faith community of the Ecumenical Catholic Communion, that we may continue to grow in the unity and power of the Holy Spirit as we faithfully proclaim the radical inclusivity of the Gospel of Jesus. We pray. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For our faith Jesus, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray for the grandfather of Susan who sits in Pianta. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you have come into the world that we may be redeemed by your grace, healed through your love, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive now our many prayers, both spoken and unspoken, and help us to accept your will in all things. For you live and reign with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I give you peace. My peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. Let us offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be the God forever.
this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's church. Loving God, accept these gifts which we now offer unto you, taken from the earth and transformed by human hands into bread and wine for this table. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may these gifts be transformed into the living presence of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. And may those of us who receive these gifts today be transformed into his very image. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let's give thanks Amen. to the Lord our God. It's right to give God thanks for grace. We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, you sent your divine Son, Jesus, into the world so that by his life, death, and resurrection, we would receive your gift of reconciliation and peace. In his deep and abiding love, he called Simon, the son of John, to follow him and to become Peter, a rock that would form the foundation of your holy church. Your holy love and grace transformed him into a powerful messenger of your gospel and a faithful witness of your grace even unto death. In that same constant and endless love, Jesus confronted Rabbi Saul of Tarsus, who persecuted your church, and transformed him so that he would become Paul the Apostle, a great teacher of your people and a messenger of your gospel of life to all the nations. He fought the good fight. He finished the race even unto death, a death that would glorify your holy name. Therefore, in our unending joy and gratitude, we echo on earth the song of the angels in heaven as we sing forever to your divine glory. <laughs> supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Thank you. 
memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Peter, our Bishop, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to the rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Peter and Paul, whose feast we celebrate today, your holy apostles, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ.
and sisters and brothers, this is Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who come to receive Him. Lord, Lord I am the Lord to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed. In the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, for those of you that are watching on live stream, we offer this prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, though I cannot or may not be able to be with you sacramentally, please bless me and let us be with you and let, let me be with you spiritually. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, those of you who here at St. Matthew's have long realized and recognized that this is not our table. This is the table of the Lord, and so all are welcome to participate in the Eucharistic feast. We ask that when you approach, if you haven't already had your hands sanitized, please have them sanitized by one of the ushers. Take your host and tink or dip it in the consecrated wine and consume it immediately. Thank you.
July 14th and be looking out um, on our bulletins and on our events calendar so that you can find further details of where. And I think it's going to be in the evening of Thursday the 14th. So um, more details to come. But save the day. Thank would you. Would this be buffer bullet? Yeah. Um, for me, it would definitely be buffer bullet yeah. because I'm horrible, but Father Art is like an amazing bowler, so he's going to be on my team. So. Okay. <laughs> Jenny? Okay. Well, hello, everybody. I'm back this week. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I won't be here But anyway, I sort of hinted that we have a big event coming up, and we do. It's official. On our Unity Sunday, which is July 31st, we are having a fiesta. The whole works. We are going to be having Mexican food. We have two mariachi bands that are going to play. Thank you, George. And we'll also have some hot dogs and stuff. So please mark your calendars. I am going to be in the gathering hall pre-selling the food, the meal, the taco meal. It's $20 a person. There's four meats, beans, rice, drinks. So it's a lot of food for $20. I can't go anywhere else for it. What do we have? George knows. He can make it those arrangements. That's one of them. There you go. So please. It's worth the drive from Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so there is a flyer um, posted on the bulletin board. Um, I'm giving this one to George. There'll be another one posted in our board, outside bulletin board. Um, it'll be online, and you can see anybody in the Community Life Fundraiser Committee that are there. And I think Pat's over there, and um, Sharon's over there. So please mark your calendar. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's from 12 until 4. So <clears throat> it's our first one, so let's make it a success. Okay. This is the last Sunday of the month, and everybody knows that's our drawing. Um, we still have a few tickets left that are $50. You have a chance to win 100 So if you have bought some or want to buy some more, um, come and see me, and we can take care of it. Let me give you a <laughs> Children's Ministry will be meeting in the Sunshine Club uh, in the classrooms um, at 11.15 or right after that? I think so, 11.15, I think. 11.15, <laughs> give Deacon Penny a chance to get ready. Um, so please join us. And also we have an inquiry class every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, oh, we're skipping this week? Oh, I apologize. Apologies, we're sk skipping this week and we'll resume the following week. Um, and it's here, the, is it in the classroom or the gathering? In the classroom, seven o'clock. And last but not least, for those of you uh, that know or maybe aren't, don't know, but St. Matthew's has always been that Catholic church where everyone is welcome. It does not work good to see other churches starting to finally put that up on their bulletins, but we've been doing it for 35 years. So we thank you, Bishop Peter, for making this an all inclusive church. For those of you that want to continue to support our ministry here, please go to our website at www.saint, spelled out, S A I N T, dash Matthew.org. And go to the giving tab, and it's really easy. If I can do it, I am technologically enough, anybody can do it. My dear brothers and sisters, let us go forth. 
with the answer to the question, who do you say that I am, on our lips. This holy mass has ended. Thanks be to God.